Ladies and gentlemen, it is music theory time. One of the most funnest things that you'll ever do in your entire life absolutely changes your life once you start getting used to this kind of stuff. Um, right off the bat, this is the first video. I'm giving you a rundown on how you're gonna approach this music theory. This is practical musical theory. This is not how you would go to Berkeley or how you would go to Juilliard or whatever college you go to or like standard music things and all that that jazz. Um, this is music theory from my knowledge from when I went to Berkeley and did all the fancy stuff. But this is the stuff that matters to me. This is stuff I use every day. This is things that will change the way you approach your music. And um, basically that's what this whole course is about. Um, this course is about getting beginners to professionals uh, who have been typically afraid to use music theory and we're going to get you jumping in and immediately learning how to apply it, how to see it, how to see it in other songs that you love and uh, ultimately turn you into a better musician. So hopefully this will change your life because it changed my life once I got the hang of these different concepts. And uh, I really wish there was someone uh, like me that could have uh, actually eliminated all the waste of time that I did do. So ideally, I'm here to unwaste your time. So... There are a couple of things that you just cannot absolutely escape from, and this video is going to jump into <laughs> the things that um, you just will have to know. Um, they are the basic terms. You will hear me talk about them throughout the course, um, and then in more advanced videos in like looping and blah, 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 and learning how to play songs, you might hear me say them too. So this is uh, really important in the sense that you learn through osmosis. If you're ever uncomfortable, come back to this video and rewatch it. You can just look at the notes. I have everything I'm about to say is all written out in the course. I'm using it as like my script to remember stuff. Um, so you just don't need to be like memorizing this in the, in the next like couple of minutes that we talk about this. You just need to know that these are important. And as you go on, you will start to click and you'll be like, oh, I remember, I remember, I remember. And at the beginning, you'll be like, what did you say? And then I, that doesn't make sense. And then you'll come back and through doing it consistently, you will you will build it up. You want to do by you want to learn by doing. You don't want to learn by like, all right, this is it. And then study it nonstop, memorize it. And then you move on. I want you to just keep jumping in. Just literally go into the places that you suck at. And that's where you need to be all the time. Always pushing the pushing your limits and getting better and better. So. Let's have some fun. Um, first thing that we're going to work through is one of the most basic things, uh, which um, you will most likely all already know, but what is a note or a tone? So a note or a tone is pretty much, this is the way I'm going to character, characterize it, is single sound that's created um, when you play the instrument um, that can vary in any pitch. So this is me on a fretboard just playing a note, bang. That is what a note or tone is, and it can vary in pitch. I can play here. You can see it's changing pitch, going up or going down. That's all a note is. So if you didn't know that, now you know. Um, now, the next thing that we're going to go to is note letters. So in Western music, we categorize what note is played based on its pitch with a letter name. So this is a G. Oh, actually, I'll be more consistent here. We'll start with the actual alphabetical order of how it goes. A, B, C, D, E, F, and then G. And then we go back to A. So those are all the note letters. So once it hits G, it starts back again at A. So that's how music theory works. The note letters goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, bam, back to A. There's no H, no H ever. Okay, cool. Now, within Western music, we have this concept called sharps and flats. Now, Western music is going to use 12 note system. So that means there's going to be 12 tones or 12 notes that exist and then it repeats. Um, that's how the series is going to work. Um, and what the sharps and the flats do is because we only use seven letters, the sharps and the flats is going to fill in the gaps between the notes because obviously seven letters and you're gonna have to fill in the gaps there's 12 notes um, and you're wondering why there's not 14 two of them uh, don't have sharps and I'll to chat about that in a second so we're gonna walk through all the notes 12 notes that exist so in letters uh, I'm gonna walk through it in sharps so uh, the gap would go A 
A sharp, B. Now this next note doesn't have a sharp, so B doesn't have a sharp, so we go straight to C. C sharp, D, and then D sharp, E. E doesn't have a sharp, so those are the two notes that don't have sharps. And then we're on F there, and then F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So hopefully I didn't mess that up. I just got like a little brain fart just there. So we got A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So 12 notes, and that is all the letters that you're ever gonna to have to worry about. Now, the opposite can be said for flats. It just basically goes the other direction. So you've got A, instead of saying A sharp, I say B flat. B, C, and then D flat, D, E flat, E, F, G flat, G, A flat, A. So it's just like they replace them. Um, but we, we don't have to go like super crazy into that just yet. Um, it is just something that as you get better, you'll understand that an A sharp and a B flat is the same note. It just depends on how we categorize it in the future in, this, in the scale that we're in. Um, now, one uh, last little thing to mention when it comes to sharps and flats. Uh, sharp, sharpening a note and flattening a note is a common term that people will say in music between raising the pitch of a note and lowering the pitch of a note. So if I play an A and I sharpen the note, it goes up a fret. And then if I play an A and then I go flatten the note, I go down in pitch. So A flat. So that is, if you ever hear it's like, oh, um, can you, like, that note's a bit sharp. That means, like, the note might be a bit, a little bit up. So that's just something that you might hear, like people sharpening a note or flattening a note. It means just up in pitch and down in pitch. So that is all you'll ever have to know when it comes to note letters. Um, that is pretty much all that happens in Western music. Now, next thing we're going to talk about is what we call the whole step or whole tone. So now we're gonna start jumping into the distance between notes and how we will categorize it in the music theory course. So a whole tone is a distance of two frets. And what we're doing is we're moving from one note to another note. So I'm playing, say it's an A, I'm going straight to a B. So you see how that distance is two frets on the guitar? A, B, and similarly, I could do the same thing C, D, so C, two frets, that's a whole um, whole step or a whole tone. And that's something that we will use quite often. Uh, you'll see in the later, uh, later videos. So whole note, whole tone is just basically two frets on the guitar and we're moving between notes. Um, now, the next thing that we will use is either called a half step or a semitone. So... When I'm doing the courses, sometimes I might refer it to semitones or I might say half step. That's why you need to know what these definitions mean. I like to get these defined for you guys so you know what I'm saying when I'm playing them. Um, so a half step is one fret. Um, so in the note world, uh, the distance between a note, so wherever I'm starting, a half step up is so A, A sharp, half step down, A, A flat, things like that, or G sharp, whatever, because it's the same thing. Um, now, one thing that you have to remember is just because I am moving from like a B to a C doesn't mean that's a whole note. Because remember, one thing that you have to slowly get the hang of and remembering is that E and B do not have sharps. So that means B just goes straight to C in a half step. So B, C is a half step or a, or a semitone. So that's all that is. So whole step, two frets, a whole note. Um, and then half step is going to be, or a semitone is one fret on the guitar. And that is, um, going to help you understand where I'm going when I start saying, you know, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, blah, 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 things like that. Now, the next term that we're going to have to try and define is an interval. So an interval, what I've written here for myself is a distance between two notes, um, uh, and the common beginner distances that we're going to cover are going to be in a second. I'll explain them. So basically, it's just a distance between two notes. So 
an interval starting from this note, that's a minor second, major second, minor third, blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of fancy words that we have for them, but what I need you to know is just the distance. So that's all an interval is, the distance between two notes. And we have a label for each one of those kinds of distances. But the common ones that I want you to be really comfortable with that you're gonna hear me say quite often is gonna be a minor third or a major third or a perfect fifth. And then the, the last one is an octave. So basically the octave is basically the same note, but one's a higher pitch and one's a lower pitch. So that's an A note and that's an A note. So that is what the intervals are going to be. Now, the next thing that, next definition that we need to get locked in on is going to be uh, chords and triads. So basically a chord or a triad, um, like the stack triad that we have, is a series of stacked intervals to make a harmony of notes. So basically notes that are gonna to work together. This can be any kind of harmony that you do in the future. But quick example, um, say I stack these notes. Those are all parts of, or triads that I'm going to stack on top of, like this one here. Creates a chord. So that's all a chord and that's all triads are doing. They're just stacking on top of each other and uh, building chords. Very, very cool stuff. Um, and then the last thing definition that we have to talk on is a scale. So the scale is, tip is just a selection of notes within the 12 notes that you could possibly pick. Um, and these, these selections of, of notes are going to create a controlled tonal space. So they're going to set up what key you're in. They're going to set up what notes are going to work, what notes are going to create tension, resolution, what chords you can build in. But that is typically what the scale does. So when it comes to music, these definitions, by the way, this is the, that was the last one. So <laughs> take a big breath. I know it is really, really tricky. Um, it's a lot of information to jump straight into. And some of it is gonna be basic as hell for a lot of you, um, but you just need to know that this, this video exists. So if you're ever confused, you can always go back. You can just look at the show notes that I have here on school, um, or you can just uh, rewatch the video. Whatever is good for you, just do that. Um, I encourage you to jump in and fail. Uh, that's how I love doing it. I love how I love learning by, by doing that's what this whole process for me is, uh, with education online. So let's go in and, uh, learn together. So have fun with these basic, basic terms and, uh, I will see you guys in the next video.